check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. What microphone is the best choice for podcasting, recording audiobooks, or voiceover work? That's a question I've been asked. And it's a good question because the product you are delivering is your voice. And the only way that your voice is heard by the audience is through the microphone. So the microphone makes a real difference and you want to make a good choice and choose a microphone that will really clearly deliver your voice with the tone and character that you want. Now, most of the time when people ask that question, the most typical answer is that you should pursue a large diaphragm condenser microphone like this one right here. This is a Neumann U87. It's a great mic. Sounds really good. And this is the microphone that a lot of professional studios use for voice work, for recording vocal tracks on music productions, or for voice work on radio stations. For example, National Public Radio chooses this microphone for all of their DJs. And so the question would be, why would I be choosing to use an inexpensive Shure SM57 rather than that Neumann U87. Now, this U87, like I mentioned, is a fantastic microphone. It sounds really good. Um, it's also quite expensive. Now, you can get, I think, most of the performance of this mic at a lower cost by choosing a Neumann TLM-103, which looks pretty similar, but it's got a shorter body and uh, a smaller price tag. Also an excellent microphone. But still, I'm using a Shure 57, which is only about 100 bucks. And so why would I choose such an inexpensive microphone when I have a great one at my disposal? Well, pretty simple. First, let's talk about the 57 for just a moment. I'm not necessarily recommending the SM57 specifically, but it is a great choice. Uh, the SM57 is the microphone that the United States presidents have used for their speeches for about the last 50 years. I think it's a design that has just lasted the test of time. It's proven itself, and it sounds great on most people's vocals. Now, the SM57 has a couple of close cousins, one of which being <clears throat> the uh, SM58. The 58 is an almost identical microphone, except that it has this round ball on the top of it, which is a pop filter to try to limit the plosive sounds, those P sounds, those popping sounds. And so the SM58 is designed for vocal use, whereas the 57 is more of a general purpose microphone, but they share the same pickup element inside of them. So therefore, if you're using a 57, it's important to use a pop filter with the microphone to control the plosives, like you can see that I'm doing right here. The other microphone that is a close cousin to these two is the Shure SM7. And the SM7 is a large boom-mounted microphone that's commonly used in many radio stations and by many podcasters. You've probably seen one. Uh, Joe Rogan Podcast uses SM7s. And like I mentioned, the SM7 uses the same pickup element as the 57. Now, that's not to say it's the exact same microphone. The difference in body yields a very slightly different tone, but they are quite similar. And if you have the ability to adjust equalization, you can make a Shure 57 almost emulate an SM7. Very, very close. And the SM7 is a broadcast standard, so... You're in good company. Now, there are other dynamic mics that would also be excellent choices. And when I record audio books, I switch through different microphones depending upon my mood or the kind of sound I'm going for. But the 57, I think, is a great choice because with a large diaphragm condenser mic, either this Neumann or some of the lower cost alternatives, they do sound great, generally, and they work well on vocals. 
but condenser mics in general are very sensitive to picking up environmental noise. So if there is noise in your environment from people in the other room, heating air conditioning systems, trucks outside, these types of microphones tend to pick up that noise much more than a dynamic microphone like an SM57. So the 57 gives me a tighter pickup pattern, so it only is particularly sensitive to sounds coming right into the front of the element and not so much off the sides and rear. Whereas this microphone is also directional, but not as directional. And I pick up a lot more room noise with this mic. And since I'm recording in my home and I don't have a really well-controlled studio environment, being able to reject that background noise is a prime consideration of mine. So a large diaphragm condenser might sound slightly better than the 57, but in totality, the SM57 gives me a better recording because I have less background noise to worry about. Now, the downside of using a dynamic microphone like the 57 is that the output level of the microphone is a little bit lower. With a condenser microphone, the condenser element inside of the mic is extremely sensitive and cannot directly drive output into your mixer. And so inside of the microphone, there's a little bit of electronics that uh, convert the signal coming off of the pickup element into a much stronger signal that can be driven down the line and into your mixer. And in that process, it's fairly simple for them to add some electronic boost. So the signal coming off of a condenser microphone in general tends to be at a relatively high level as microphones go. Whereas a dynamic microphone, the element itself generates electricity from sound pressure. It's somewhat akin to a loudspeaker operating in reverse. It's got a, a diaphragm with a coil attached to it in front of a magnet. And as that diaphragm vibrates from sound, the coil moves in and out of the magnetic field and directly generates electricity. And so the output level of a dynamic microphone is a little bit lower and that requires more gain in your preamp. Now, just because of the nature of things, when you turn the gain up really high on your preamp, you're likely to get some background hiss. And so you'll need to use a high quality preamp or perhaps a booster preamplifier, like a cloud lifter, to get the level that's coming off of a dynamic microphone up high enough and clean enough to make a great recording. And depending upon the preamp you use, that might be no issue at all, or it may be something of an issue for you. Now, when using a dynamic microphone in a rock band situation, the levels that are coming off of guitar amplifiers or vocalists belting it out on stage are generally high enough that this is no issue. And also the background noise tends to be no issue because the environment you're performing in has enough background noise that it all gets covered up anyway. But when you're recording books on tape, doing a podcast, or doing voiceover work, the silences between your words will clearly reveal any background noise or hiss that you have. And so that is an issue that you need good quality preamplification, particularly when using dynamic microphones. But I found, overall, in my situation, while recording at home in less than perfect environment, the Shure SM57 or a similar dynamic microphone is actually a better choice than an expensive large diaphragm condenser. Not to say that both of them are not excellent choices, depending upon the environment you're in. If I was in a well-controlled professional studio that was extremely quiet inside, this is probably what I would reach for. But since I'm not, the dynamic mic actually works better for me. And so another lesson here is that if you have a budget that could afford something like this, your budget might be better spent buying a less expensive microphone and taking those funds and putting it into acoustic treatment for your room. The sound of the room probably impacts your output more than the sound of the microphone. So you don't need to stress too much about what microphone to use. There's a lot of good choices that won't break the bank. 
And a professional grade microphone, especially if you have the ability to equalize in post, will probably do a great job for you. And like I mentioned, before spending a whole bunch of money on a fancy microphone, put some of those funds towards making your recording environment better. I hope that tip was helpful for you. And uh, I encourage the discussion if you want to give me your opinion. And I'm glad that you tuned in and checked out this episode of Sound Advice. Take care.